Welcome back guys, my name is Chris Patrick and today we are on video number four of our multi-part video on our motor tuning abilities here and today we're going to go over a little bit more advanced on some tuning options, mainly talking about temperature, but we're also going to talk about how the motor actually functions when it comes to the internals and kind of what you're looking for. So stay tuned, we're going to get a little bit uh, geeky on this video and hopefully you guys enjoy this video. guys we got you closer to the bench so now we're going to talk a little bit more advanced about motors and how they function but also some advanced tuning features and some things to, to pay attention to so first let's start with showing you some things that I was not able to before but this is a sensor board that I was referring to in the last video and it has, and it's even labeled, let me get that towards you. It's labeled A, B, and C. That is your sensor board that you're trying to get the top of your rotor to, which is this piece right here, as close as you can get. So you notice this particular motor has like six shims on it on the top side. And this is directly how Trinity sent this particular motor. So the one that's in question is a Trin Trinity Punisher 10.5. I bought this for the drag car, just didn't get to install it because the, the rules got changed before I actually got to run it. So no big deal. Um, but I actually had this out and about, so I felt like tearing it apart to show you. So that is your sensor board. So when it comes to how your motors are built your cans and this is a bad example because it's so closed up but inside here and you may be able to see this is copper windings those copper windings actually represents the turns of the motor so in this case this is a 10.5 so it is 10.5 revolutions of copper per pole that is on your motor. That's how they generate your turns per motor. It's not based on your rotor, but it's actually based on the can when it comes to how many turns it is with wiring. So inside here's also magnets. There's, in this case, three, but around those magnets, each of your poles of your A, your B, and your C all correlate to a section of wiring that is inside of this. So the best way I can word it is you've got, and I'm gonna use this field as the example. So this is the middle pole, so this is B. So the B winding is here and down here. Then you've got C on this side, which is over here and over here. And then you've got A, which is here and over here. So they are polar opposites of each other. So that way, that way, and that way. They work in a full 180 degrees from each other. So also your rotor is exactly the same way. There is actually four magnets, sorry, two magnets inside your rotor. And then each magnet has a north and a south. So you've got a north Let's just say the Trinity logo here is going to be your north. The bottom side of that's going to be south. And then the other side would be the exact same way, north and south. And they work in correlation with each other. Um, it's north, south, north, south. It's how it works. Um, but they work together with this. So those magnets, and that, the reason why I'm going over this is this is, has everything to do with heat. So these magnets are what's called neodymium magnets and those magnets lose their capabilities of providing full strength magnet at 80 degrees celsius 
which is I think 174 or 175 degrees. It's somewhere right around there. So that is the magical number that you are trying to stay away from when it comes to tuning your motor. If you go past that point, then you start getting what's called motor fade. And motor fade is when your heat, your engine gets to the point where it's too hot, those magnets start losing their magnet field and they become weaker. And then in turns, your motor becomes slower because the magnets aren't working as good as they used to. So with that, that is the number you're shooting for is 175 and under. You don't want to get up that high. I personally don't. I mean, you get around 150 degrees, you're going to be okay. But you start getting past that point, you're flirting with permanent damage on your particular motors. Now, again, everybody does things differently. I suggest 150, 160 and under. That's kind of the, that number. You start getting over that, you'll have issues. Um, but on that subject of durability, that's the nice thing about brushless motors. There's no physical wearing parts besides bearings on your particular motor. As long as you take care of those bearings, which they can be replaced, this motor will last you a lifetime if you take care of them. If you don't do anything and you gum up your bearings and just destroy it, obviously it's going to get worn out and things aren't going to work like they used to and then your motor is going to become useless because you didn't take care of it unless you want to tear it apart, do full maintenance, replace rotors, the, all of that which can be done. So I'm stressing that. So the heat is your enemy to your magnets and that's what you're trying to eliminate. So next question that somebody's going to ask me is, well, how do you test temperatures in a motor and where do you test it? You can buy an economical um, infrared thermometer like this. I think this came off Amazon for 15 bucks, 10, 10, 15 dollars. I don't remember. It actually works pretty good, but you just hit the button. It turns on, aim it, and it'll give you a little laser pointer red dot on what you're aiming it at. It's pretty close. So right now it's saying it's 61 degrees inside my garage, and that's probably accurate because it's cold. So I also have a fluke visual IR thermometer. It's about a $500 industrial unit. We're going to use that to identify exactly where you want to aim for your motor. So let me get this motor on the dyno. Let me get some heat generated in it. I'm going to bring you guys back and we're going to go over some uh, testing with the economical version and then we'll go over it with the visual IR so you can see the difference. Stay tuned, guys. Okay, we've got this nice and warm. So let's go ahead and take our visual IR and we're going to get nice and tight in here. So with this thing, it's going to give me the temperature at the top left corner and it's got a little crosshair. So if I aim this down here on my workbench, you're going to notice it's saying it's 60. 60.6 degrees so if I start getting really close in here so right now I am aiming at trying to get into the rotor kind of hard to see it's warm I'll tell you that because I can feel it so inside the motor in that can I'm aiming down inside here Sorry, the back side. That's 146, 153. See, it's it's still going. 156 degrees inside. Inside there. So let's go down to the rotor. It's saying 106 degrees. Let me zoom out. Let's just try getting the outside of the can. Right dead center on the magnet. Right here. And that's 124, 123 degrees. So back inside where that metal winding is, 132, yep, 133. So that's your magical temperature. So the problem with this is you're not going to get a great, like, precision reading. So, like, I'm getting 106. 
104, 120, 137, but it's bouncing all over. And that's the problem with the more economical readers. So I got 123 aiming down towards the center rotor section right here using this. So yes, this is a lot more precise, but this is also a $500 test tool. Uh, I use this professionally, so that's why I have it. Um, but just to give you an idea of test equipment that's out on the market, these will give you the same results. It's just you may have to hunt with this. I mean, the nice thing is you can sit here, hold this down, and you can hunt until you find out where it's nice and warm. Okay, and then you remember, that's where that spot's going to be for this can. So the difference is... The cooling with this motor is going to be different with the cooling with this motor. So what works for this test environment may not be the same for you and your engine uh, or motor, I should say. Every motor is different. So what I'm trying to stress to you is, is what you're really aiming for is the copper windings of your motor, your magnets, and your rotor. Those are the three points that you really want to check, and I would be... I would highly suggest you be very thorough with you checking everything when it comes to motor temperatures after a five minute run because the last thing you want to do is run five minutes and then you take this thing off the track and you realize it's 215 degrees and you do that continuously that's how you damage motors so with that, we're going to wrap this video up. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the little tech tip on uh, temperatures and some concepts on how the the, the motors function. And uh, we're, we're going to wrap this video up with that. So don't forget to like, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the, uh, the wonderful Fluke Visual IR tool. It's kind of cool. It's badass, honestly. It's just a little overkill. And uh, with that, we're going to wrap this video up. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, hopefully you all have a wonderful and fantastic day.